Great job, guys. Fantastic. As, as almost always, really good work. Now, we're going to relay read this, so if you don't have all the answers yet, obviously we'll go over them and you can get them all. But that's uh, actually a fantastic job. Really appreciate that. All right, so let's get to our protection. we got Scroller in Chief, Grayson Acevedo. We're going to do relay read and start uh, Bronson. I'm going to work around, we're going to come in here, we're going to work around again, we're going to, we're going to go back to Bronson, and we may hit the class twice because this is a good long text today, okay? So nice and loud, everybody, let's, let's hear it, all right? Your mark it set, perfect today, let's go. go. The ratification of prison amendments, southern and even to northern states found legal ways to discriminate against African Americans and deny them the right to vote. In 1871, Georgia was the first state to require a poll tax to vote. Many African American voters, voters could not afford to pay the tax, so they could not vote. Some more states required a poll tax. Many states said they found that the motion required a little to be taxed This tax required African Americans to read a complicated part of the state constitution and to interpret its meaning to the country. Because many former slave laws made it illegal for enslaved people to live in life, many formerly enslaved people could not pass these sets. To help white soldiers work around these restrictions, the southern states passed grandfather clauses to exempt any soldiers whose grandfather had voted, which was excluded at the time. After Reconstruction ended, many southern and some northern states started passing laws to limit the freedom of African Americans and citizens. The new criminal laws laws in the South created especially harsh penalties for minor infractions or law breaking. For example, a person convicted of stealing a piece of livestock faced years in prison and future laws. That's you, Jamar. Go ahead. Often these laws were enforced Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Jay, can you help me? Come on, man, that's a tough one. Disproportionately. Eggs disproportionately. Good. Nice job. As a result, prisons in the South became crowded with African American inmates. In many states, African Americans could not serve on juries, which many felt led to unfair verdicts in cases against African Americans. The southern states also passed Jim Crow laws that resembled the form of black codes. These laws forced racial segregation or illegal separation between races. <coughs> 
measles prevented African Americans from using the same schools, things like buses, among other private and public facilities being owned for white Americans. In 1896, the Supreme Court decided the landmark case of Plessy versus Ferguson. Homer Plessy was arrested for sitting in a train car and being the only for whites. Plessy argued that having separate car files in the 14th Amendment, which called for equal protection under the law. The Supreme Court disagreed, stating that it was legal to have separate facilities as long as they were equal in quality. In reality, these separate facilities rarely were equal in quality and typical would be inferior for African Americans. The separate but equal doctrine was a law of the land until 1954. In this year, the Supreme Court decided the landmark case of Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka. Topeka, we can say that. Topeka, Kansas. Keep going, Ramon. <coughs> the question was whether. I lost my spot. That's okay, buddy. Can you highlight that for me? The question was whether. You see it there? The question was whether it was constitutional to have separate schools for African Americans. The defense argued that racial segregation did not exclude value in the 14th Amendment. The Supreme Court agreed in the 15th Amendment. In his ruling, Justice Warren said, We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate, separate educational faculties are facilities. facilities are uh -huh. The Supreme Court's decision in Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka overturned separate but equal doctrine from Plessy versus Ferguson. <coughs> it ruled that separate schools are by nature unequal. A year later, the Supreme Court issued a second decision about in integration, the process of ending segregation, and allowing students of all racial backgrounds to attend schools together. The justices. The justices. Urged huh. school districts to use all deliberate speed to fulfill interrogation. Nice. However, many southern school districts were reluctant mm -hmm. to admit African American students. One reason for court rulings such as Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka was that African American leaders had been organizing for many decades to demand that the equalities promised to them were actually protected by the nation's laws. In 1909, these leaders formed the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. Today, this organization still is active in addressing civil rights issues. Lawyers from the NAACP, such as David Marshall, helped achieve victories in the Brown versus Board of Education League and others. Activists in our group, in other groups, such as the Southern <coughs> Southern Christian 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 Leadership Converse oh. SCLC and the Students Nonviolence. Coordinating Committee, SNCC, formed a large movement to challenge segregation in buses, restaurants, and in department stores. The Civil Rights Movement further extended the protections of the 14th Amendment across society and led to the passage of many important laws. For example, the loving First Virginia decision in 1967 stated that the 14th Segregation policies allowed states such as Virginia to apply separate but equal to marriages. White people could marry other white people. African Americans could marry other African Americans. However, uh, white people and African Americans could not marry each other. In Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court ruled the Virginia ban of interracial marriage violated the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment requires that the freedom of choice to marry not be restricted by invidious racial discrimination.
regulations under our Constitution, freedom to marry or not marry a person of other race resides with the individual, individual and cannot be infringed by the state. The NAACP and the other in the African American civil rights movement use the process of challenging the first file such as this. That's a crush, a real reason. Good job. That's the longest one we've done all year long, and you guys did a, did a fantastic job. Somebody grab a uh, pocket constitution for me, please. Grab, get the 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment. Most cited amendment in American law today. Okay, good. 14th Amendment. We got it. Okay, second sentence, please. We read the first one yesterday. We, we read the first stanza of the second sentence. While Watson drops some knowledge on us, go ahead. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Nor shall any state require any person's life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Okay, fantastic. That's what's mostly cited here, okay? The second part of what Watson just read is, no, no state, nor shall any state, deprive any person of liberty or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction equal protection under the law, okay? So what that was saying was these recently freed African-American slaves get the protection of all the laws, okay? You can't take certain things away from them. But now we take the 14th Amendment and we expand it, Okay, and it's moving past that, okay? So the Supreme Court's using the 14th Amendment to tell Virginia that they can't tell who you marry, okay? And now we're talking, now we've recently done the same thing with gay marriage, and we talked about that yesterday, okay? Loving versus Virginia, 1967. Up until that point, and I told you guys, I was six years old, and in, in my state where I lived, you couldn't marry, a white person couldn't marry a black person, okay? It just seems weird, but that's just the way it was back in those days. But Slowly but surely, the 14th Amendment keeps making more and more of these rights, privileges that everybody has. Okay, great job, guys. All right, so let's get back to this. Poll tax. Okay, very easy. You guys know exactly how to do this. Again, I'm walking around. I'm checking on you. Everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Armani, you got it? Go. Poll tax is collected on individual people instead of on their property or their income. Okay, now, that's exactly what a poll tax is. I want you to keep going this time. A lot of times these definitions, they give you the first sentence is all you need. But the important part of this is it's sometimes a requirement for voting. And the other important part to know is from your text, that it was used to keep African Americans from voting in the southern states. Okay? And often selectively enforced. Remember, African Americans generally didn't have as much money. Okay, So if you charge somebody to vote, which sounds like... A Crazy idea, anyway, whoever came up with that, okay? It's generally going to affect African Americans. And then you throw in the fact that it was selectively enforced, okay, where white people generally weren't asked to pay the poll tax, right? So know that it was selectively enforced and that it was used to disenfranchise or take away the vote from African Americans. Okay. Second one, literacy test. Who's got that? Go, Merritt. Following the end of the Civil War, many legislators in the South passed the laws that essentially made it legal to discriminate against African Americans. Okay. The right to depended on, now, get this one too, Meredith, the right to vote depended on passing a literacy test. Okay. Prove whether or not a voter could read and write. Well, if you've been a slave all your life and the law says you're not allowed to read and write, What's your chances of passing a literacy test? Zero. Even generations after that, okay, even as you got into the 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s, it was difficult for an African American person to find a good school to go to. Okay, so this was obviously meant to get African American people not to vote. Imagine showing up to vote and they say, "Well, here's a paragraph out of the state constitution. I want you to read this and tell me what it says." Okay, when your parents were never educated. You've had a hard time finding a way to get to school, even, I'm talking long after the Civil War, okay? So this went on for quite a while. Black codes, who's got it? Watson, go. Black codes were a group of laws passed in the former 
Confederate states right after the Civil War. Laws were passed to limit the rights of newly freed African Americans. Let's keep that in there too. And these are a little more complicated, these definitions, than what you normally do. When usually when you guys click on this, you just get that first sentence. But let's, let's make sure that we know in each case, okay? So the black codes represents all those laws. It's very similar to the phrase Jim Crow laws. And we talked about that yesterday. Okay? Basically the same thing, the black codes they call them. And the last one was integration, I believe. Okay. Opposite of what? It's, a, it's an antonym for what? Um, yeah, segregation. Go ahead, give me the definition. We have it. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. When you segregate, you go like this. When you integrate, you go like that. Okay. And that's, you know, obviously the, our school is such a great example of integration. I've, I've never been anywhere like this place. You know, when I stand around, I look at you guys, and I've told you this before, I see these. It's like a rainbow of colors in my classroom. It's just fantastic. And we are just a classic example. You just wouldn't have seen this when I was a kid. Almost never happened. Okay, I, when I went to school, it wasn't forced segregation, but it just was. Okay, I mean, I, I went up until my junior year in high school, my last high school I went to was probably 40% black. But up until then, I'd have two, three black kids in a school of 2,000. I mean, it just, and it wasn't because they weren't allowed to go there. It's just no, there's no black kids in my neighborhood. And, um, and we are just so different down here. It's very different. Who was that NAACP attorney that I, that I mentioned? Yes, go on. Uh, Thurgood Marshall. His name is Thurgood Marshall. Ended up being the first African-American Supreme Court Justice as well. Okay, he was a, an attorney for the NAACP at the time. Very famous case. Melinda Brown versus the Board of uh, Education of Topeka, Kansas. Result of Loving versus Virginia. Who's got it? What was the result of that case? There it is. Yes, sir. After uh, Loving versus Virginia, the interracial, the interracial couples could legally marry. Exactly. Please add to that that the 14th Amendment protected them. Because that's what we're looking at here, right? What is the, we're, we're expanding the, the reach of the 14th Amendment. Okay, so you're exactly right. That's exactly what it was. I just want you to know that it was, they used, and that's what the Supreme Court will do. And I told you this yesterday, they, they issue their rulings, and then they write opinions on them, the majority opinion, or the minority opinion. In this case, they actually cite the 14th Amendment. It tells you you can't do this, okay? And that's just another evolution of the Constitution. I love this word for some reason. I, I was reading this quote, and often when you read these things by these uh, highfalutin lawyers, you get these great words. Okay? Has anybody looked up Invidious? Have you had a chance to look it up? Can you Google that for me real quick? Mm -hmm. Yes, Van. Um, unfairly discriminating or unjust. Yes. Un unfairly discriminating or what? Unjust. Unjust, and, in, and there's another part to it. In order to do what? What's the, what's the purpose of being invidious? We're good. Actually, you're welcome to come in, Zoe. You can hang out and keep an eye on me, make sure I don't mess it up. Thank you. Make sure, actually, I set it up properly. That would be good. Thanks. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, the, uh, the idea of the, in this case, it was to segregate. But are we also, we're, we're doing, invidious means to do it basically just to anger somebody, to create anger or resentment, and that's the definition you got there, okay? So you're, you're making a law or you're doing something just to create anger or resentment. You ever come to school and you feel like your teacher's in a bad mood, they're just being invidious? Yeah. Okay, or maybe some days I come to school and I feel like my classes are just kind of off the chain, they're just being invidious, they're just trying to... Make me angry, okay? Yeah. Well, it happens. You run in, so try when you're, you know, you come in some days and you're in a bad mood, and I try to do the same thing. Don't be invidious. And anybody that's got Bertolini, see if you can get that on her word wall over there. That'd be awesome. Okay, nice job, guys. All right, today we're going to do what we take what we did yesterday and learning all those techniques, the persuasive techniques that uh, authors or artists of political cartoons use. 
And we're going to put them to use today, a kind of fun little exercise that I think you'll get into. Okay, so you're going to go to your, back to your Google Classroom. Okay, and please open this link that I installed in your Google Classroom. It's no laughing matter. Okay, that should take you right to that website, please. Okay, it may tell you it requires Flash plugin. You can just click allow on that. Some of you, it won't. You've probably already done it. Okay. We're going to go to the learning activity. It's asking me again, even though I've done it three times a day. So you allow to run. Okay, we're going to look real quick at the same one we looked at yesterday just to kind of review for you. Everybody got that? You good? It takes a while. Sometimes it does, yes. I, I get that. I get that. You good? No? You good? Now you good? Okay. So wait on. Okay. Everybody sees the same cartoon we looked at yesterday. Okay. So again, just a quick review because I know you guys uh, knocked this out really well yesterday. Now, when I look for symbolism, who's going to be the symbolism in this? Yes, sir. Okay. Symbolism, that is her. Now, when you do these exercises here in a few minutes, it's going to allow you to take symbolism and drag it, okay? And it'll give you a little opening if you're correct. If you're not correct, it'll just zip back up, okay? So you'll take a few minutes and you'll do this on your own here in a minute. But he's correct, okay? So the little girl is symbolic, really, of what? Yes, ma'am. Because um, she was a black little girl, so like when they made that law, yes. it was like she was... Like celebrating on that day. That's exactly right. Day. And she symbol that that whole idea. She symbolizes what idea, what movement at the time? Um, the, the segregation. Fighting segregation, yeah. right? You want to add anything? What she said? Perfect. Okay. So the, she's just a little girl, but she represents the entire movement to fight against segregation in public schools. Okay. What was our exaggeration? Yes, Mary. The, like the fence. Yes. Okay. Big, huge fence. Okay, no gate in that fence, right? There's no opening. It's not like you're going to go there and walk through it. Okay, unless you're a pole vaulter, you're not getting in that school. Okay? Now, remember, this is a cartoon. Okay, separate reality from what the guy's trying to tell you, okay? This is not a photograph of a school, okay? What, where's the labeling? Labeling's always easy. Yeah, what's Okay. There you go. Okay, that's always easy to find. James Crow Public Schools, and we talked yesterday about what that meant. Okay, so calling it James Crow Public School, what means what, Bronson? Why do they call it James Crow? Because it's like segregated, so it's like a Jim Crow. It's like a Jim Crow. Yes, which were similar to the black codes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, now we have, uh, actually, let's go to the uh, irony. What's the irony? Yes, sir. No. Not the white dude. No, no, no. Just the white dude. It's the thing on the top. Like, is it the, the words, words that she's saying? The words okay, the words that she's saying. Okay, here she is, eight years old. I was born on the day of the Supreme Court decision. Isn't it ironic that I'm still sitting here trying to get into this white school? Okay, eight years after, which, what was the name of the case? Jim. No? No? Fighting it was fighting segregation, but what was the name of the Supreme Court case? Oh, Brown versus Board of Education. Brown versus Board of Education, Topeka, Kansas. Okay, great. And then lastly, as is often the case, the analogy is what? There you go. Often, and don't get stuck like it's always this, okay, but it is often the entire thing. You're making an analogy of this little girl sitting on a step trying to get into this big school with the whole process, the whole problem when people trying to lock African-American kids out of school and them struggling to get into them, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. That's a good job, by the way, and I know we've done it. Now, what you're going to do here is move to these, and you're going to do the drag and drop, okay? And I'm going to go back, and first period did this so fast, I was going to give you two minutes for each one, but you really don't need it. 
So I'm going to give you, how about two minutes to go through and, and do them all, work together on this, okay? And then we're going to just pick a few of you to come up here and get her done. Okay, so you got two minutes on your mark. Get set, knock it out. Let's go. Look them over, nice and easy. Okay. Just like that. Just grab it. Oh, you know? Study these cartoons, guys. Take a look at them before you start dragging. Look them over real good. Labeling, like I said, is usually very easy. All of them? Oh, the first one, yeah. How many is it? There's four. There's four. I don't like the which one? Mm. Remember, it's a cartoon. However, it, it represents something that is very real. It was, you know, the whole, actually, it's almost more sad than just a single scene. Hmm? Yeah, go to the next one. Yeah. Do all four of them, guys. And then uh, you can raise your hands at whichever one you feel more comfortable with. You come up to. Yeah. You got them all four? Okay, good. No, you'll come up here and you'll do one at a time. No, I meant Oh, no, it'll go. There you go. Yeah, they are all used in each one, okay? And that's a good question. Sometimes when you look at political cartoons as we get into doing these, Um, when we get into these things, sometimes not everything will be used. In this case, they all are, because it's an example. All right, you guys ready? No. Yeah. No? Yeah. You want to take the first one? All right, Tracy, you take the first one. Here we go. You want to take the second one? Okay. Third, fourth. Okay. All right, let's go. Well, she drops knowledge. Labeling. Sometimes it goes too long. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you're right. You just got to be something. I think you're touching the phone in your hand. Okay, that's easy. Okay, the door represents school segregation. Exager exaggeration, exaggeration is. Oh, you're uh, wrong there. Go a little to your left. Nope, oh, up, 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 up. Okay, that huge door is an exaggeration, okay? Uh, wait a minute, let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you got it. It's ironic that it's going inch by inch. It should be going quickly. Your symbolism is what are they? What are those little kids symbolizing? Yes, they're symbolizing again. It's like the little girl and the other one. They're symbolizing that entire struggle. Okay. Let me shrink this down for you. So you can the master, all right. Who believes that? Thank you. Uh, let me just wait a minute. I'm going to get it some time. Oh, I didn't Okay, here we go. Armani drops knowledge. She's going to free you. Know. You know what? Let me. The new kid. He's a new kid. Okay, ironic. Jeez. Touch it lightly. There you go. Often what they're saying is ironic. They'll often use irony. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. Okay, it's ironic that these little guys are saying maybe it's not such a great idea that I go to school. There you go. That's good. That's good. Exaggeration of the white mob chasing these little kids. Children, ex they symbolize exactly what we've been talking about. tell you that's suburban school. The color of the suburban school is what? White. White. Inner city school is? Black. Yeah. how suburban public school is white, but it's more than just white, it's like the sun shining on it, you know, and then here you have that darkness, and, and you guys have probably seen comic books if you ever, you know, I know a lot of you actually read them, but any, any character that's dark and foreboding like that, you know, it's almost like there's evil that goes on there, and uh, the, the, this author was just fantastic, or artist was just fantastic about that. All right, the, the old kid that's kind of a new kid that's back, because he's a new kid and he used to be an old kid. Jeremy. Flat out telling you that's a public school. A public school? It used to be, yeah, wasn't it? It was, it was not uncommon to have like school houses back in those days. You didn't have a big school, you just had a little house that everybody went to school in. A little bit exaggerated. Oh, 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 right there. All right, fantastic, guys. I'm not kidding. That's a really good job. Okay, now, do you have an idea that you can do this on your own? Okay? So here's, your, here's what you do now. And here's... Okay, go back, go back to the document. Now, when you go to your document, Political Cartoon Analysis Worksheet, in order to actually edit it, you're going to have to make a copy. Okay, all you guys know how to do that? You done that? Because I, when I put it in, I, put, I, I didn't put each student so I'll get an individual copy. So in this case, you're going to have to make a copy of it. So I want to be able to edit it for you. Yeah, so that you can actually edit it. You're going to work together on this, okay? So work with your partner. Even if you use three, that's okay. No more than that. Okay? So first thing you want to do, and name it. Remember, everybody's names are on it. Okay? Just pull down file and make a copy. That way you can edit it yourself. Yes, only one only one person is going to turn this in. And just make sure all names are on them. We've done it before. Okay? Okay, let's turn it back. Turn it back. Does everybody have a copy made? Listen up. You with me? You're there? Okay. Okay, real quickly... I want to make sure you do this before you start doing anything. Read the instructions. They tell you everything you need to do. You're only doing one cartoon. You're naming the cartoon yourself. You're going through it. You're finding all these persuasive techniques. Okay? And that's all you got to do. You only have to do how many? Oh, that's easy. Okay? This is easy, isn't it? All right? 
So you get that done, you get both names on it, you turn it into me through Google Classroom. You got that? Think you can possibly do it by the end of this class? Yeah. You don't have to, okay? If you don't get it done, I'm going to grade them tomorrow, okay? All right, on your mark, get set. Go. Go.